Hi everybody, welcome to Catherine Sews. Thanks so much for joining me today. So today I wanna to show you how you can very easily take a pattern and either downsize it or upsize it by a size or two in either direction. I wouldn't say it's a difficult process, but it does take some time and accuracy. But even if you are a beginner, you can totally do this. I'm gonna be doing this jacket, beautiful jacket Vogue pattern, and it goes from six to 12. So if you want to do a four or 14, this is a process that makes it very easy to do. So the way I'm gonna show you today is not the real pattern grading that you would use in the fashion industry. Um, but actually in my next video, I think I will show you that, how to do the old school, not by computer, but by hand pattern grading of how you make a pattern into all the different sizes. So if you only have one size, then that's what you'll need is to hold on for that video. But if you have a pattern like this that has already multiple sizes, it's actually really easy to just kind of follow what the, what the lines are already doing and just go down or up. It's actually pretty straightforward. So that's the process I'm gonna take you through today. And then next time I'll show you how to do the full on real old school pattern grading. For today, all you're going to need is the actual pattern, all the pieces, and you'll need, I like a see-through ruler like this, I've shown this many times, and my favorite hip curve ruler. I don't really like the plastic French curves, they're just not, they're just not the best curves. This is what I like for everything, the very form curved rule. You'll need some kind of paper to draw it onto, and so I'm going to be using the back of gift wrap, which works beautifully. But you can buy rolls of paper at Ikea, Walmart, you can buy paper in lots of different places. Even newspaper works in a pinch, but it's not, it's not the nicest to work with. And then just a sharp pen or pencil and some tape, okay? By going through this process, if you learned something today, you know what you gotta do. You gotta hit that subscribe button. It means a lot to me and I appreciate it a lot. Thanks so much. So if you've got all that together and you wanna make your pattern a one or two sizes smaller or one or two sizes bigger, you're all set, so let's jump in. Generally with pattern grading or size grading, the increments get bigger as the sizes get bigger. Let's just look at the waist measurement. The size six is a 23 waist, so very tiny. And then for the eight, you go up an inch. For the 10, you go up an inch. So just inch increments in the, the smaller sizes between six, eight, 10. Then you go up an inch and a half for the 12 another inch and a half for the 14. Then it's two inches, two inches, two inches, and three inches. Keep that in mind as we look at the process for changing the sizes on the pattern. So the first thing I did was I actually ironed my pattern pieces with no steam, but fairly high heat to get out all the wrinkles so that I could lay it smooth on the paper. And then I taped all of the pieces down. So you'll see these solid lines, all of the sizes share that line. So we won't be altering those lines at all. Same here, it's only where we've got the multiple lines that we'll be adding or subtracting. So I'll be showing you how to go up to a 14 or 16 or down to a four. Anytime you see these corners that obviously fall into a line, I like to draw a line to connect all of those corners and then this is another good line to go through here at the notches. And then maybe one up here as well. Good. When I'm sizing up, it's the bigger increment that I'm going to be repeating here. And when I'm sizing down, it's the smaller increment that I'll be repeating to size down. To go up, I wanna measure what this amount is and it's exactly three eighths of an inch. So this whole section, I can see this is parallel. It's not always the same though. Sometimes you'll see a taper, so you have to be aware of that. But here we do have that exactly parallel. So I'm gonna put my see-through ruler sideways, put the three eighths line of my ruler right along that outer edge, that outer line. And wherever my ruler is parallel, I'll just be drawing right beside and shifting it around as I go. Shifting my ruler so that that 3 8 line is always just riding right along that original outside line. This is the 12 here, 
So now this is a 14. And I would do the same thing again if I wanted to make it up to a 16. I would draw that line. I'm missing a little bit of paper right there. But I could just tape on another bit of paper. And again with my 3 8 line riding right on top of the line I just drew. And shifting my ruler so that I'm always staying parallel. Good. I can always just add on a smidge more paper there just to get that corner. Okay. And now I want to move these notches out as well. So I'm going to draw a line right through those notches. And that shows me where my notches would be on those sizes. So this is now the 16 here. This circle here is probably for a pocket placement or something like that. So again, I would just draw my line right through. And then I can see that from the 12 line, that 12 circle is one inch in. So I would put a circle here for the 14 and here for the 16. So now the curve here, that's definitely the trickier bit. So again, all of the corners fall into a line. So I'm going to draw a line right through all of those corners. Let's just do the upper part here first. I think that will be easier. So that is just a hair more than a quarter inch. I'll add that on there for the 14 and again for the 16. Alrighty, so now this taper at its fullest point here, we are going a quarter inch. So I will come out one quarter of an inch here. It's going to blend right back into this point and this point, and it'll be blending into these corners here. So that's where I want my curved ruler. So to duplicate that curve, I'm going to see where that lands on my curve as it is. And from that notch, I can place the four at that notch. If I want to just duplicate from the four up to this point. There. Good. And then coming in this way, yeah, that curve is going from the one to the corner. So I'll put the one at that point now and bring it up to that corner for the 14 and then one more time for the 16. Good, beautiful. And then that would be my notch there. These circles here, this would be placement for easing in the sleeve. These are not all in a straight line. They are actually following a curve. So I might just be able to manage that by drawing in a line lightly along that curve. They are all 5 8 from their sewing line. So for the 14, I just want to hit that line and be 5 8 in. I'm going out 5 8 from the 14 line here, the 14 cutting line. And wherever that 5 8 meets this line is where I would put my dot for 14. And then coming down to put the 5 8 line at the 16, wherever it hits that line will be the 16. And then these all just connect together, right? So I've got the 14 and 16. So that's my first piece done up to the 14 and 16. Now what about if I wanted to make it smaller? It's the exact same process, but just using this smaller increment. I can see that that increment is a quarter inch. So I'm going to just put my quarter inch line now right along that dotted line. And I only draw where my line, where my line of my ruler is laying on top of that. And that's really nice and quick, right? Instead of drawing dots that you have to connect, that is really nice and quick. There's my two notches. And then coming down here, this increment is just a hair more than a quarter inch. So that would be fine there. This is about, let's call that 3 sixteenths of an inch in. So I'll use that same increment, 3 sixteenths of an inch. 
find out where that curve fits on my curved ruler. And again, it's what it wants the four at the notch. And then I'm connecting to this corner. So I want to bring down the four to there and then connect to that corner. Good. And then here it was the one connects to the notch and then coming to there. Make sense? There's my notch. So now that's the four. And the circle for the four is five eighths in from that sewing line. And wherever that hits that curve line there. So there's the four. Good. Okay. And this circle was one inch in, wasn't it? Alrighty, so that really is the, the process that I would repeat on all of my pieces. If it's a single line, I don't have to do anything. It's only where I've got the multiple lines. So first connecting the corners with a line. Using the bigger increment to go out for the 14 and I'll do that again for the 16. And then using the smaller increment to go down just a hair over a quarter inch. And then seeing where that curve fits on my curved rule. And now it's the 20 that's at the corner and blending in around here. So I'll bring that 20 up to the new corner for the 14 and up to the next corner for the 16. Good. Down here. Okay. This is a hair under a quarter inch. That's for the 14 and then the same for the 16. And then duplicating that curve, bringing it to my new corner. And these are all just stacked on top of each other, so I will just do the same stack. So that's 14 and 16. Just connecting these corners, because it's gonna blend here. Just swing that out to that corner and to meet this corner. Perfect, looking good, hey? Okay, let's just do the sleeve and then you'll have the idea. So the sleeve is exactly the same process. You're just going around a bigger curve. Okay. Then my increments here, quarter inch for the bigger sizes and the smaller sizes. So I'll come up a quarter inch for the 14 and the 16, down a quarter inch for the four. And now they're all going to turn the corner at the exact same spot. The increments along here are just one eighth. So I will come out an eighth and an eighth and in an eighth for the four. So I will be doing some connecting the dots around this big curve. Up here, first of all, I'll connect those circles with a line. And then I'll look at the increments along this axis. For the smaller size, I'm going down a quarter inch. But for the bigger sizes, I'm going up three eighths. Good. And let's do one more over here. So I want to connect these corners here and these corners. Good. Good. So I'm duplicating the curve here. It goes from 17 and a or 16 and a half at that corner. So I'll slide that. 60 and a half up and that connects perfectly to that dot and I'll slide it up again and connect to that dot for the 16 and then going down same thing good coming around the curve here duplicating that curve so right along this axis I want to have five 
and again for the 16. And around this way. So a big curve like this, you use the ruler different directions, different ways, just to kind of capture as much of the curve at one time as you can. So this is working okay. If I put the three at that line, slide it up. And slide it up again for the 16. And then down here, there, and again, there, about like that, and about like that. Good. These ones are all in a line. There's the 14. There's the 16. So do you get what I'm doing? Along this axis, wherever 5 eighths or 1.5 centimeters is in from that edge, that's where I'll put the dot for the 16. Wherever it's 5 eighths in from that line, that's where I'll put the dot for the 14. Make sense? Okay. These ones can just all be connected with a line. There's the 4, 14, 16. Midway point here for this taper, 3 16 and 3 16 and coming in also 3 16 So this section is a straight line. So I'm just going from my midway point to where my line hits that axis. Yeah. So 3 16 in here and out here. This part will be parallel. I'm just going to connect those all there. Perfect. And then the last little bit here. Good, and that's about it. Sometimes it, the increments are the same. Sometimes it's smaller for the small sizes, bigger for the bigger sizes. You just connect your corners, duplicate your curves, and then put your place your marking circles and dots, whatever you need. You have to be careful. You have to take your time, but it's not, you wouldn't call it difficult, right? It just takes time. Okay, everybody, that's it for today's video. I hope you found that helpful. I hope you learned something. And if you did, I hope you hit that subscribe button because it was great to have you along. And I'd love to have you along next time too, when I teach the real old school pattern grading. Good. So until then, you take care.